we have some uh, coincidence with the talk of Mohammed, uh, but he reflects a very special technique, very challenging technique. So uh, the ankle instability, could you run the video? This is the most common video. <laughs> Sorry, could you run the video? No, no, but it's not running. The video, let me see. Okay, you see what can happen in a top, top athlete here. Uh, this is the most frequent sport injury we heard along, and we mostly have it in impact sport like soccer, basketball, volleyball, tennis, and uh, squash. We know when you jump up, our foot goes, hind foot goes in inversion, and, and if you want to have a proper landing, then you have the problem. So uh, we talk about the uh, anterior and posterior figure ligaments and the uh, calcaneo, uh, and fibular calcaneal ligament, and most uh, of the, the ethology is a twisted ankle. But it's not only fibular ligaments, where they can rupture, but we have uh, in a supination trauma, uh, we have possible affected structures like lateral, uh, like the syntesmosis, the metatarsal, fifth base, uh, medial malleolus, os naviculare pedis. And for example, you always have to look at the lateral process because when you have a fracture or destruction of the lateral process and it's overlooked, then you have a severe uh, arthritis, ongoing arthritis in the uh, subtalar joint and we learned about the osteochondral lesion. So acute rupture will be treated when, uh, conservatively if there is not a special reason. We have uh, 14 international prospective studies uh, and when we compare that the conservative functional, functional treatment uh, is the treatment of choice. But we have also, this is my indications for surgery, uh, lesions of uh, three ligaments, because this is really unstable, but very, very rare. Uh, massive hematosis, exact, uh, uh, particularly in professional athletes, what I, what I think they want to come back, return to sport very fast. And when you have a big hematoma, you can evacuate it, you can debride some, uh, some soft tissue, uh, ruptures and you can sutures arthroscopically the, uh, uh, the ligaments so they come much faster return to sport. And when we see, uh, for example, when you have four weeks always constant pain in the ankle after an ankle sprain, you have to make an MRI because then the, the, the uh, suspect of a um, cartilage lesion is, uh, is given. And, uh, when we have the ankle arthroscopy, we can treat the cartilage lesion, we saw that, and also suture the uh, ligament. So rehabilitation is extremely important and we brace it and I make always a full weight bearing in the brace because this is a stable situation in the brace and mostly we have to address in the rehab training, the proprioceptive training and perineal muscle training, which you can do on the trampoline or for example, on a wobble, uh, wobble uh, a soft, a soft mattress. So arthroscopy is working. Yes, uh, we have we have seen the technique of Mohammed, very challenging, but uh, uh, this is a case of chronic instability, and the structures are not so so easy to see. So, what is the options? We always have to do, have to do anatomical ankle reconstruction of the ligaments. And so we have different techniques and open techniques, reinsertion of the FTA and FC, reefing mostly of the FC because this is more elongated than ruptured. And uh, we can do a Boston procedure, open or arthroscopic. We can make a periosteal flap when we don't have substance. We have to bring substance inside. And I do that with a periosteal flap and we can use allografts or tendon transfer. So the modified Brostrom uh, procedure 
It's very simple today with, the, with all the tools of the industry. You see that he was a suture bridge uh, technique, uh, and this gives in primary uh, reconstruction a very good result, and this is the key surgery for decades in the US. So, but uh, I, and, and then uh, the, the uh, internal brace came in, and I think this is a very, very good technique because we, we uh, make a stress bypass by the uh, internal brace, and uh, the, the patients have a simple and uh, safe, reproducible, uh, early weight bearing uh, and uh, immediate weight bearing, what I always do stimulation to allow for aggressive early rehabilitation. This is for active patients, for athletes. It's, uh, for me, I always do that. And we have a quicker recovery, immediate stabilization results in quicker recovery and especially crucial for athletes. Uh, and it offers sometimes, it's not proven scientifically, uh, resistant against future injuries and uh, joint protection against instability and associated arthritis. So, this is uh, the Brostrom technique you see here. I've, I've, I've freed from the soft tissue the distal fibula, and then we have the suture text. And what you can see is after we, we pull it out, the suture text, and then we, have, when, then we, uh, then we uh, have the retinaculum and fix the retinaculum by both suture texts. This is a very, very fast and, uh, uh, and uh, successful technique. I use it uh, always when I do uh, arthroscopic surgery, uh, for example, in addition to my cartilage reconstruction. So I'm a very low threshold on, in, in cartilage reconstruction with minor instabilities. I fix it because it's endoscopic. Again, you see here, this is uh, what I'm doing often. I, 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 I do in minor instabilities, I do the arthroprostrum. And you see now in this video that uh, I have debrided a uh, osteochondral lesion on the lateral side. You have, mostly we have it on the lateral side in, in, in uh, twisted ankle. And you see I use bone marrow always. And then I have an, an amic procedure by chondro, gideo, or hyaluronic fast. So when we don't have substance, we do need bring substance in, and this is a periosteal flap. You see, I prepare it from the fibula, and then I fix it here at the distal fibula. I'm going uh, back to the insertion of the talus, and going back, you see this is a very, very good, uh, very strong uh, reconstruction. And sometimes I do also, for good healing, I do an internal brace inside. So we learned about uh, cases, chronic cases, which, uh, and this is the history, that, uh, that we have tendon transfer, we have the hamstring, we have plantaris, uh, and you see different techniques, but uh, my favorite technique is the anterior tendon transfer from my friend uh, Masato Takao. You see, we uh, incorporate uh, the the tendon with an interference screw into the fibula, and then we make an anatomic reconstruction with the two branches uh, for the anterior, the short one, and for the, the, for the uh, um, FC, uh, a longer one. And uh, what we see here in his technique, uh, he, he has uh, a, a different portal to see that very nicely. It's an additional portal, more uh, caudal. So I don't do that often like Masato, and that's why I prefer the glass, uh, the grace book technique. This is a percutaneous technique, and you have an, you have an uh, C arm, and then you can see the insertions with small step incision, and you do the same. And uh, for me, it's much faster, uh, and that's why I prefer that, and it's also minimal invasive. 
I come to the medial instability. The uh, uh, medial ligament complex is a broad ligament with multifascicular appearance spreading from the medial malleolus to the talus, calcaneus, and navicular bone. It's delta shape. We have one superficial layer and one deep layer. You see, in dorsiflexion, we have the posterior parts, which were under stress, and in plantar flexure, we see it's the anterior part up to the navicular. So when you go into the superficial layer, you can uh, imagine that we have uh, different, uh, different, four different uh, ligament parts, uh, the tibial spring, tibial navicular, and tibial tala, and tibial calcaneal. And in the, dis uh, in the deep layer, we have a tibial tala ligament posteriorly and anteriorly. So uh, the uh, function is a primary medial stabilizer of the ankle. Medial side on our lower leg is the medial pivot. Restrain valgus tilting and anterior translation, and restrain against lateral translation provides stability of the, of the overall tibial uh, talocalcaneal joint. When we look at the epidemiology, my friend Beat Hintermann shows, uh, of course, in, uh, in ankle fractures, 40% of deltoid ingredients, but, but we can also see that uh, it, is, it often will be overlooked, and sometimes we see patients which have overcome the, uh, lateral, instability, uh, the, the lateral pain, but they have still pain at the medial side, and we have to address that if there is a rupture. So the, the history is giving way uh, ankle pain, popping, soft tissue swelling, tenderness at the medial malleolus, and valgus heel deformity in, in chronic cases. We know that when it's, we have a rupture in the flat foot, then uh, we have the heel valgus. We, we have the uh, different tests, and uh, this is my preferred test uh, in, in dorsiflexion. You tested the posterior part in neutral position. You test the uh, medial part and the anterior part. You test in plantar flexion. So the uh, gold standard is the MRI, of course, and especially when you see the, uh, when you see the coronal plane, it's uh, the easiest way to evaluate uh, the rupture. Uh, you can do also ultrasound and scope, but uh, for, for the first diagnosis, it's uh, the axial MRI and the coronal MRI. So you can see here the deep layer on the medial side of the uh, ligament complex. This is the tibio, tala, posterior, and anterior. You can see that. And uh, the treatment in not severe ruptures is, of course, uh, conservative in a, in a boot or in a walker. And uh, we have also indications for acute injury and chronic so surgery repair of chronic insufficiency, this is a real challenge. Uh, we, we reefing advanced technique uh, with a suture anchor placed approximately six millimeter above the tip of the medial malleolus. And uh, in, the, uh, in the reconstruction of chronic, we have two things. It's the split PTT graft. And what I prefer is the semitendinosis tendon transfer because you can harvest the semitendinosis very easily. This is uh, Gordon McKay, the inventor of the internal brace. Uh, I was in, in a lab course with me together. And you see that the internal brace gives the possibility especially to have also the calcaneal and, uh, and the, the uh, Tala component to stabilize it. And, but you have to be very careful when you put this, brace, uh, this internal brace here in, don't touch the subtalar joint. So be aware of that. So you see here in the lab, the technique with the internal brace. And in this case, you see the, the flexor tendons for demonstration are gone. Normally you have to be aware that the tip post is there and the flexors. Uh, and when you then fix it, it's uh, underneath the sustentaculum and uh, you have to drill it a little bit uh, uh, 
straight, not upcoming into the subtalar joint. You see that now, when you have done one, it's quite stable. I cannot see my presentation. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, it's, it's, ah, yeah. You see here now one case of, uh, no, I go back one, that one. I talk about my technique of arthroscopic delta recon I developed uh, a couple of years ago. It's, uh, it's adapted from the arthrobrostrum. Okay, sorry. Uh, and you see here at the medial malleolus, the same techniques, suture text. And then I also did it with the banana loop. I, I uh, take the tissue and fix it uh, at the medial, uh, at the medial uh, malleolus. You see here there is no rupture of the deep layer. This is, but you see a little bit of bleeding. Uh, and uh, the most challenging are chronic instabilities. This is a real, real challenging thing because the patient is absolutely unstable. He is wobbling with his, with his ankle. And uh, this is with the ACL tightrope. And uh, you see a drill with 6.5 reamer, the allograft tunnel. And we incorporated sutures into the eye of the guide pin. When we pull it in, then we fix it with interference screw at the anterior part and at the posterior sustentaculum part. Uh, and then this is to the, that time untensions reconstruct and that makes the things very, very easy and, and good. And then we tension it and have very good and tight re, uh, reconstruction. So, you know, we have to think about the, uh, the uh, possibility of, uh, of uh, injuries of the, of the uh, medial complex and this is the medial pivot and we have really to address that otherwise the patient has, has uh, a lot of uh, problems and it has been underestimated. Uh, the instability after ruptures and fractures in top as it should include a reconstruction also of the medial ligaments. When we have a, a professional soccer player and you see uh, there is a huge hematoma and, and uh, you see in the MRI there is a small partial tear. I address it uh, by endoscopic reconstruction. Thank you.